Good afternoon, everybody. Hope you're all doing very well. So I'm going to recap two positions that I took the week before last week. I was supposed to put this video out then, but I got caught up with a few things. So I thought I'd bring forth a recap now. Two positions, one on gold, one on euro dollar. The gold position was a loss and then the euro dollar position, was, which was taking the same morning slash afternoon of the gold loss, was a 13.2% win. Now, the gold position, both of them extremely simple to explain. I'll start off with gold because this was the first trade that I took. So starting off with the left. At the time, this was roughly the time the trade was taken. We can see we've clearly, clearly broken and closed past 1880s. And what's happened here on the left is this range that we've got. If you look at roughly half of that, we don't use fibs um, as, a, as a confluence measurement, anything like that. I'm just using this to demonstrate the 50% range of this particular liquidity range that we've got here. Just as an observation, what you can see that's actually happened is we've broken through the one, two, and a three, and then we've completely rolled over. Now, the only time we essentially have greater confirmation of a rollover or even a change in trend, whether that's to the upside, is when we have a continuation pattern. So if we go down to the four hour time frame here, we can see we've had that, we've smashed through, we've gone from that into exhaustive price action, then into further exhaustive price action. So the trade was taken inside here. So we draw the structure on. Now, whenever we have inequality within the makeup of the structure, as you can see here, from 0 0.1, 0 0.2 and 0 0.3, the only time you pay relevance to that is when it can evolve into something else, which it can hit. And the reason for that is because we sat right beneath this. So what this can actually cause price action to do, essentially tag you in, tag you out, break through, break back in, continuation and it drops. Statistically speaking, that's what happens. So if we go to the one hour, this instantly told me to stay away from the risk entry, plus the structure size is not something I want to be taking a risk entry within. So what happened here now, we've come through, we've exhausted at this area. I was initially waiting for a break out and then a break back in, followed by 15 minute or five minute continuation to take short. We didn't get that, we turned around at this particular stage that you can see. We pulled back up, we didn't really form much and then we continued trickling, trickling lower and then towards the night, as you can see there towards midnight, we had this form and then the trade was taken right there as a reduced risk order this then tagged me in and tagged me out and then after that it dropped through now hindsight is a beautiful thing i know looking at this in hindsight why this did fall through but you can't always judge everything off of hindsight otherwise believe me you're gonna have a very stressful time in the markets i know looking back at this that it's tagged me out it's tagged into this range here and it's dropped now one thing that i see and i've, I've coached some some very proficient traders who are very good at technical analysis but they can't trade and the problem with trying to figure out every single reason as to why every single trade is a loss in this case i knew why it was a loss looking at it in hindsight but i did the best i could beforehand and that's the most important thing but the problem with traders is they're trying to figure out every reason as to why every trade was a loss now although there might be an underlying reason behind every loss do you really want to stress yourself in the pursuit of finding that out when it holds little to no relevance and it will actually do more damage to your mind when in fact, in actuality, you're supposed to keep a calm and a composed mind in the markets, not one that's scattered all the time, trying to figure out reasons or scan reasons in the market as to why your trade is a loss or trying to find every answer behind every trade in the market. I have found when I've coached traders like this or I've worked with traders like this and I've seen traders like this that they have a far worse, far more stressful time in the markets and they end up giving all their money back. The name of the game is not trying to figure out every reason why something happened. It just isn't. You know, whether the markets are rigged or whether there's this secret algorithm running the market, I don't care. I really don't care. I've had many people ask me about this. I give them a very simple answer back. I do not care. All I care about is trading as proficiently as possible within the edge that I know like the back of my hand. That is it. I'm making money at the end of it. I'm not bothered. I don't care what happens. I don't care if there's clowns, monkeys, algorithms. I don't care what's trading the market. And that's not me being closed minded. That's not me being pessimistic or of any kind or me lacking optimism or me lacking passion. I just don't see the reason why someone would stress themselves over trying to figure that out 
instead of actually figuring out the patterns within yourself as a trader as to why you keep making the same recurring mistakes and why you're still not making money why don't you study them patterns for once and maybe you'll figure something out so let's go back to the charts i can see for this particular instance as to why the trades tag me out but i don't use that as a reason to stay out of trades you either take trades or you don't you can't use every single reason to paralyze yourself to not take a trade the main things were met here the trade fit my plan and the trade risk was lowered why was it lowered we knew the risk for the risk entry was too high so i waited for the turnaround which we saw on the one hour time frame then we had the continuation here to confirm it we're high up in the run as we can see we're in the right areas and that's what's most important tagged in tagged out and it dropped nothing i can do by it the next morning so i woke up obviously in the morning 6 7 a.m so i took it out for loss and then euro dollar shaped up so euro dollar shaped up around here as we can see inside of that if we look at the dailies for a minute on eu extremely simple again nothing with regards to how we trade is complicated there's no secret terminology or anything like that that we use there's no secret indicators it's just pure price action and market structure um, and again i'm I, i've i'm yet to find anybody that trades the falcon way out there there is not one single person or trader that i've come across that trades this particular way there are some elements of elliott wave in it but we don't actually refer to that we have our own adaptations of that so this is pure price action and patterns and market structure and this is not typical patterns that you'll just find on the internet your typical bull or bear flags this is a different way of understanding how these patterns work and the more breakdowns i do for you guys the more you'll actually see as to what i'm talking about here anyway so we've had a clear footprint left in the market on the left here as we can see value area broken structure we smashed through and price is trickling all the way back down to there now which is very probable for it to actually tag these areas at 104 800s now if we go down to the four hour time frame as we can see we're in a state of continuation now we are in price action like this which means this can form all types of structure we don't want to get involved in trading into ranging or exhaustive price action when it's just going from correction into correction and so on and so forth where you can start making up trades if you don't know what you're looking for this is where pattern separation is key <clears throat> so we can see this is one structure of its own this is one segment of its own and this is one segment of its own so because we have this entire range here sat above that again another reason very similar to gold as i would not be entertaining any risk entries combined with the fact this is a larger structure which naturally increases the risk of the setup so we've got this rough channel here again i'm not bothered about the exact measurements of whether it's here or here because i'm not be taking risk entries from the top anyway i'm just simply waiting for price if it does to get into these areas here and if it does do that then we can wait for a turnaround and continuation that's all i'm bothered about i know what i'm looking for there an hourly rollover 15 or 5 minute continuation the override however to that is this so this little override within the pattern here that we've got which it actually tagged and the beautiful part about this price action is how we came into it we pulled back and then we exhausted the second time and then we broke through this entire range after we broke through what gives us a higher confirmation of change in sentiment continuation structure now a lot of people were concerned about this now this is a five minute hook point as we can see there so because my entry was on the 15 minute i'm not bothered about that very simple systemic we can see on the fight on the 15 minute time frame here sorry looking at that we've got this beautiful one two three little expanding structure and we can get involved there which i did with a 10 pip stop i'll put proof of execution somewhere around here even though it's a little cringe i'll be honest with you right but i know what it does wonders for people who have difficulty using their brain cells um and actually understanding that these entries are consistent they're sustainable you don't see me taking different entries i take the same consistent entries throughout regardless of what what instrument i'm trading obviously entries that fit my plan that is and only have two different types of setups in my plan that is it very simple consistent sustainable and scalable that's the most important thing and you, you can repeat it anyway so i got involved there and the management was very simple on this one there was nothing too difficult on this because this has dropped off straight away so this is the first point of management we're running eight percent i already locked in around 8.5 at this stage and then we're trickling to the bottom of the structure now a little tip not only are we at the bottom of the structure here as we can see the 90 percent rule 
but this dropped heavy in one day. Do you really want to try and swing this trade? Out of personal preference, I prefer to get out of these trades and just take my profits. Because the likelihood of this pulling back from here, sharp, or even for that matter, turning around, is very high. So you kind of lock in 9 and a bit percent, or even 10 percent. But I was more than happy taking the profit at 13.1, 13.2%. So I closed right here. And then there was another trade which happened last week, which I missed because I was on a call. I'll recap this as I'm here anyway. <coughs> so this was around half eight in the morning. Again, I wake up around five. So the trade would have been taken all day, every day. But I was on a call, so I didn't see the trade. And again, very re repeatable price action. Extremely simple. Nothing too complicated about it. And you'll see in a second. Okay, so it's in that. What we had here. So we had price breakthrough. We had this little value area on the left. We'd smashed through that. Of course, this is one separate pattern of its own. Then we broke through and formed this. And it's from here, which we've actually broke the structure. We came back up to grab volume from the area and we dropped and then we formed this larger consolidation. We came through, we trickled through, and here is the most important bit. Remember, this area here at 104.800 has not been tagged yet. This is still in a state of continuation on the higher time frames. So we're extending, 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 and then it's inside of that that we can see right there on the 15 minute that would have been taken. So we're throwing wicks about up and down here, as we can see. So I can draw straight through that structure and actually play off the bodies of the candles as, as opposed to the wicks. Just a little observation with the pattern there. This one could have been taken with about... Actually, you could have stop cropped that, yeah. So this one would have been stop cropped. For those who aren't aware of the term stop crop, essentially when you have wicks being thrown out of the structure, like I mentioned, you can you can see them as anomalies, basically. They're irrelevant. There's nothing to pay attention to there. And I'm simply playing the bodies as if the wick isn't there. So that's how I'm managing my stops. So yeah, this would have been an around 11 pip stop. And then again, management, very simple. This just fell off. There was nothing too, too complex about this. Right to the bottom here, to the start of the structure. Job done. 18% out. Call it a day. Now, I don't want to build a false perspective here and a false picture. These trades don't happen every single week like this to this extremity. But when they happen, you've got to be in the position to capitalize. Of course, as I mentioned, I was on a call. But again, the trade is very simple, repeatable, fits the plan low risk, stunning, well positioned, right at the top of the run. All the volume has been built, built, been built here. Management is simple. So we don't get trades like this all the time, but when we do, we capitalize. And that's the most important thing. The, the problem with the trading space today, the lack of professionalism that we actually have in this industry now, you're being deluded into thinking that you can have trades like this every single day or every second day, and that you can accumulate 20, 30, 40%, 50% return a week. Maybe it's available in the market, but is it sustainable? And is that scalable? Because if that was the case and there was actually a method to do that out there that was emotionally manageable and doable for us human beings, half of you guys would be multi-millionaires if not reaching a billionaire status with that kind of compounded return. But why is it people are still trying to penny pinch, find ways to get profitable in markets and finding ways to be, you know, FBI. I need to find how this dot connects to this and what happens here and all these different complexities and mechanisms in the market that are nothing to do with you that you shouldn't even bother about in my opinion the market doesn't care about how smart you are you don't want to turn up to the markets being a smart ass who knows everything about the charts it's good don't get me wrong there's nothing wrong with knowing the industry that you're in there's nothing wrong with understanding the mechanism of the market i'm not saying that what i'm saying is you need to get your priorities right and understand is that your first priority or is your first priority learning how to actually make money in the markets consistently which has very simply got to do with finding one edge mastering it and sticking to it and knowing it like the back of your hand and sticking to it like super glue that's what's most important and learning about yourself learning about the patterns within yourself how you can emotionally compose yourself what a lot of you don't realize to finish this video off you're supposed to be properly capitalized instead what all of you are doing is you're getting the dangly carrot syndrome. You're seeing these prop firms come out of nowhere and you're betting your entire future in a prop firm. See, in the Falcon in-house prop firm that we have, 
we've got our own liquidity providers. We don't b-book anybody. That's why it took a lot longer to build. We've got our students insured. If they reach a quarter of a million, 300K, which a lot of them will surpass this year. And when they do reach that, and if they go on a, a losing streak, they underperform, whatever happens, and they happen to lose that account, that account will be given back to them because we have a properly set up infrastructure. We could have affiliated with the prop firm, we didn't, on purpose. Rewired, our psychology program, it was built from scratch. Mark spent two years building this. From 15 years of experience, I'm telling you, everything that we do here, we take it seriously. We're not here to sell you on the best system on the planet. There's probably a more effective way to trade the market out there. You know, you can probably go off and learn from somebody else who, you know, will teach you every single mechanism about the market and will sound very smart and all these things will probably teach you order flow charts and all these really interesting things. You know, we've got to understand we're trading level one CFD charts at TradingView here. It's nothing complicated, but I would rather be the person that knows less about the market, but has made 100, 200, 300K in one trade or two trades, or even cleared that kind of money in a month or a quarter compared to the person who knows a lot, but is heavily undercapitalized and not in a position financially that they need to be. And they're still glamorizing three to five, 10K returns. Again, there's a different type of standard here that we've set at Falcon. And that is what I'm trying to get across here. Thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for the next recap. And there's another video dropping this week that is going to be extremely crucial. That is going to follow on from the message I just mentioned. I'll speak to you all soon. Take care. And as always, trade sharp.